Welcome to the Overcomers Conference 2024. This year, Bethel Apostolic Ark is celebrating 30 years of ministry. To God be all the glory. Our facilitator today is Elder Kamoy Saunders, overcoming injustice in the church. If you would like to download our celebration booklet, please do so by scanning the QR code. If you would like to donate to our ministry, details are below. Enjoy as we continue to celebrate in Jesus' name. God bless you. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody give him a worthy praise. 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 Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Praise the Lord. I want to greet the head of our life, which is the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to greet our bishop. Praise the Lord. Our bishop Bailey. Praise the Lord. Elder Dawson. Praise the Lord. And any other ministers, I want to greet you all this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God is good and is good this morning praise the lord praise the lord praise the lord we are here to talk and to encourage the church this morning praise the lord praise the lord many of you may not know who i am i am elder kamoy saunders but i prefer brother kamoy saunders praise the lord it takes pressure off of me praise the lord jesus you know sometimes you hear the title you get freed so i like the brother praise the lord Praise the Lord. I am Brother Kamoy Saunders. Praise the Lord. I am here to talk to you, the church this morning on a topic that are not, it's not very, it's not taught a lot in church. Praise the Lord. It is not addressed enough in church. Praise the Lord. And sometimes people leave our church because they didn't receive what we're going to talk about today. Praise the Lord. I want us to feel free this morning to interact with me, to talk with me, to put your hand up and ask questions. Praise the Lord. We have 40 to 45 minutes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. So wherever I finish, I finish there. That's Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. So we're going to be talking today as a body on the topic of injustice in the church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I touch on the topic, I really want to encourage the body of Christ. The speaker said last night that you have to be an overcomer. And in the book of Revelation, it says that he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And, will not, and, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angel. So none of us, if we think that we're just going to make it to heaven just like that, it's not going to work like that. To make it into the kingdom of God, you have to be an overcomer. Praise the Lord. So whatever you're going through, God has put it there because he knows you have the ability to overcome. It doesn't matter how hard it looks. It doesn't matter how challenging it is. God knows that you have the gift. You have the power to overcome that matter. Praise the Lord. Or else he wouldn't put it in your way. Praise the Lord. The Bible says through every temptation, God has made a way of escape. Praise the Lord. So all of us, I know you're going through it. And you may say to yourself, I cannot make this. I don't know how to make it. But the truth of the matter is God has already made a way for you. Praise the Lord. It's just to you to take that way. Praise God. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. So, what is injustice? This is a question. What is injustice? Someone has done you wrong. That's right. Anybody else want to have a try? Not receiving justice? Something that's not fair. Praise God. That's the word I was looking for this morning. So, injustice is a lack of fairness or justice. So, when there is a lack of fair treatment in the church, that is classed as injustice. Now, the scripture lets us know that God is just. God is fair. So, we as children of God, we must also adapt that nature. That whatever we are doing, especially in judgment... We must fear the Lord and make sure we're given a right judgment. Amen. If you remember when King Solomon became king, he prayed and said to the Lord, Lord, 
I have got this kingdom that, I have get, that has been handed over to me by my father. And the thing about Solomon, he was rushed into power. Because at that time, his brother was trying to take the throne. So when he was rushed into power, the first thing he asked the Lord for was for an understanding heart. That he may know how to judge his people. Because we must understand that the church bridging are not our people. They're God's first. Praise the Lord Jesus. So when we are treating them, we have to treat them and understand that these people belong to the Lord. Jesus says it's better if you, you hand a, a rope around your neck and put a millstone mule around your neck and cast yourself over in the sea than to offend one of the least, one of the least in his kingdom. So we have to understand that justice is very important in church. It's very important. It is very important that we make sure we are handing out justice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. King David was the first king that God appointed in the sense that God has chosen him. And by the spirit of God, we want to turn our Bibles this morning to 2 Samuel 23. 2 Samuel 23. I want to read from verse 1 to verse 5. I'm going to ask my wife to be the reader for us today. 2 Samuel 23. Now these be the, le- the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, and the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, the spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. And the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds, as the tender grass springeth out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made me an everlasting covenant ordered in all things and sure for this is all my salvation and all my desire although he maketh it not to grow praise the lord so this is king david and he's writing a psalms and the spirit of the lord uses his tongue to confess this and what he confesses in verse 3 he says he that ruleth over men must i want us to look at the context of the scripture must must be just ruling in the fear of the Lord. So anyone that's in position in church, pastor, bishop, evangelist, elder, deacon, God has called you first to be just. Just. And then ruling in the fear of the Lord. So when we're put in this position by God, it is not to make us look cute or look fancy or look powerful in the house of God, but it's to make sure we we are there To make sure justice is served in the house of God. And that we live a life that we fear God by. When you fear God, there are certain things you will not do in church. When you fear God, there are certain things you will not do in your personal life. Because you know that your life is not your own. We sing the song so much times. I'm not my own. I belong to Jesus. But sometimes if we're honest with ourselves and we check our life. We realize that our life is our own. And we choose when. We give it to Jesus. But the word of God said that we must be just and ruling in the fear of the Lord. Right. Now, in verse 5, at the very clause, it says, Though my host be not so with God. So David acknowledged that his host should be a host of justice and ruling the fear of the Lord. But when he reflect on his host, he said, wait a minute. My host is not so with God. Praise the Lord Jesus. No, we want to look into the house of David. Um, I think it was Paul that says, all things are written for our learning. A lot of time we don't pay attention to the Old Testament because we say it is done away with. But there is still meaning, wisdom, and power that comes out of the Old Testament that we can apply to our life today. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus, when he was here, he didn't teach New Testament. 
He actually taught Old Testament. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. So all of Jesus' wisdom came out of the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. So let us look at the house of David in 2 Samuel chapter 13. We're going to look at the crime, the injustice, and then the fruit of the injustice. Now we won't go through all of the scripture because of time's sake. So I'm going to highlight a few scriptures this morning. So the first part I want to highlight is um, verse 14. How be it he would not hear, hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced and laid with her. Praise the Lord. So if no one knows the story, this is um, Amnon. Amnon. And he has, he says he loved his sister, but when you read the story for yourself and go home, you realize that cannot be love. He lusted after his sister because he had a strong sexual desire. Praise the Lord. I hope I can talk and be real today. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So he had a strong desire for his sister. And he wanted to sleep with his sister. And it was so bad that the word of God said he leaned from day to day. You can see him walking around depressed and sad and frustrated because he can't get his sister. No, just me saying it. You in your mind is saying, man, that's a wicked man already. Yeah. Because anyone that's going to look at their own sister and lost after her to that level has a perverted mindset. That's right. Praise the Lord. That's right. Praise the Lord Jesus. So he was looking for his sister and it was so noticeable that his uncle said to him, why are you leaning as a king son day to day? In other words, he would start getting skinny. He stop eat. I want us to understand his desire. He stopped eat, he stopped drink, he was in his bed. Can't get what he desired. But he was planted in his mind. Praise the Lord. No. When his uncle came to him and said, Why are you leaning from day to day? He, he told and confessed to his uncle and said, I want my sister. And his uncle didn't say to him, Oh, what you say a while ago? What do you mean by that you want your sister? In fact, his uncle encouraged him. And gave him counsel how to obtain what he wants. His uncle said, go to bed and farm sickness. And pretend that you're sick. And ask the king that your sister Tamar will come and look after you. Praise the Lord. It's just for us to understand that we have to be careful who is in our corner and what wisdom we're getting from them. Praise the Lord. Because if we don't believe these things happen today in churches, we're sadly mistaken. And you're living in a bubble. Praise the Lord. Because you can, if you have a strong desire for anything outside of the will of God, the people in your circle must instruct and say, brother, I know your desire is there, but you can't do that. You must do the will of him that sent you while it's there. But in his circle, he had a man that was subtle, the word of God said, and he gave him counsel. So the story goes on that he eventually formed sickness. And we just read in chapter 14 that she actually begged him when he went to sleep with her or rape her, she begged him, please, don't do this. Don't do this folly in all of Israel. I'm asking you, please, my brother, I don't want this to happen. And the word of God said that he, he did not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than, her, than, than she forced and lay with her. He raped her. Because he was stronger than I. Praise the Lord. No, these things can happen within our body. And when these things happen in our body, what is the justice for it? Because these sisters will come and tell us, and what we will say, some of us will defend the people that has already done it. Some of us will say, come sister, let us pray. And let's get over it. Forgive such a one, which is you must forgive. But, there needs to be justice for that sister. Praise the Lord. There needs to be justice for that brother. It's not revenge. It's justice. Praise the Lord Jesus. No, in verse 21 of the same scripture. If you could read for me. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister. All right. So, if this is happening to your house, 
and you heard that your son has raped your daughter, what would be your reply? Let, let us judge how honest our heart is this morning. Praise the Lord. I'm coming very direct this morning because I got a few time. Praise the Lord. What would, what would you do? This is a question. Beat him. <laughs> Sir said, beat him. Sir again? Fire and brimstone is coming. Huh? So we see that we can be honest when it comes to our family. But why can't we be honest when it comes to the house of God? My God? You see that? We know how to judge when it comes to our personal family. But when it comes to the things of God, we don't really know how to judge. Praise the Lord. This is why you must be just and ruling in the fear of the Lord. Because the, the truth is, the family of God is actually more better than your actual biological family. Praise the Lord. Some of our biological family would tell us to go drink uh, uh, and get girlfriend uh, and do all these things. I remember when my wife wanted to get baptized. Her, her advice that her mom said, you're too young. No, get baptized, man. You're a young girl. Go do what you want do want all these things. These are, you can't take that wisdom. So we see then that we are more honest with our own family than we're honest with the church. Right. And this is what we have to break. We have to break that cycle. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that David was wrath. He was angry. Okay. Then what? It's not good enough to just be upset about a situation. That's right. That's it. It's not good enough. Right. The word of God said when the sons of Eli was keeping adultery in the church. That's right. That the reason why God was upset with Eli. We could skip there quickly. Um, 1 Samuel 3. And verse 13. And then we'll come back to David. Everyone alright? Yeah. Alright, good. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth, because his sons made him south vile, and he strained not them. You see that? So God was upset with Eli because he knoweth what his son was doing. He knew his son was keeping adultery and sleeping with the sisters and thiefing out the sacrifice and all these things. And listen to God's problem because his son made them sin vile and he restrained them not. In other words, he didn't say, all right, you need to stop. You need to stop. You can't, you can't offer up sacrifice before the Lord no more. He stopped. He never stopped his son. He talked to them. He expressed that what you're doing was wrong. But because he never stopped his son, God said, I have a problem with you. Yes. yes. It, it, when these things happen in church, we as leaders, we have to be just yes. and rule in the fear of God. We can't just say, oh, it happened. No, we have to take action. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to do something because the truth is, if we don't do something, that soul is going to die. And the truth, many people will not come back through our doors, not because they don't believe in God, not because they don't love, love God, but because they never had no justice. Something happened to them. And when they told and when they speak up about it, we hush them, sweep it underneath the carpet and clap our hands and say, we're going on our way to heaven. And no justice was served. Praise the Lord. These things should not be in our houses. And these things should definitely not be in the house of God. God. Praise the Lord. So let's go back to Amnon. 2 Samuel 13. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wrath. He was emotional about it. He was upset about it. But notice verse 22, he didn't do nothing about it. We said we are, we are going to beat the boy. Fire and brimstone go reach him. But King David being the king, because he loved Amnon as well, he didn't do nothing about it. He didn't give his daughter no justice. The word of God says she 
walked among in the kingdom of God in shock class of ashes. The garment that she had, she tear it up because her innocency was taken by her brother. Something that was she was keeping safe for a man that she loved to give him was taken, was snatched by force. Praise the Lord. Verse 22 says, Absalom spake unto his brother Amnon, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Amnon because he has forced his sister. Now, because David was not man enough or strong enough to so say, son, you know what you did is wrong, so I'm going to handle about the situation. Because he was in fear in his judgment, Absalom hated his brother. I want us to look at that. Because justice was not served, hatred was now in the kingdom. The word of God said, where iniquity are bone, the love of many wax cold. Anytime wickedness is in, is in church, you realize love is outside of church. Iniquity and love cannot be in the same building. I know we hug each other and shake each other's hand and sing nice songs. But if iniquity are born in that church, I'm telling you there is no love there. This is just the concept of God. God said where iniquity is aboning, increasing day to day, hour to hour, love will eventually work school. So some of the, 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 the backsliders, as we call them, is because something happened and iniquity was done to them. They love towards God and men wax cold. Praise the Lord. All right, let's go. Let's go down some more to verse 28 and 29 and see what happened. Same chapter, same chapter 13. Verse 28 and 29. In chapter 13. Second Samuel. Now Amsalon had commanded his servant, saying, Mark ye now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him, fear not, I have commanded you. Be courageous and be valiant. And the servants of Absalom did add Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the kings arose, and every man got upon him, got up, up, up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass while they were in the way that tidings came to David saying, Absalom have slain all the king's song and there is not one of them left. Keep reading. Then the king arose and tear his garment and lay on the earth and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. One more. And jo jo Joanabad, the son of Shimei, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's son, for Anam only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, we have a bigger issue here. Because David did not judge the matter properly and make sure justice was served, we see Absalom took upon his hand to make sure justice was served. I want us to see that. You see, any of we don't do justice in the church of God, I'm telling you, somebody in the church is going to exercise it. This is where we get problem in church. This is where we get division and fighting and wars among us because the truth is some people can see that their leader is unfair. And they themselves will say, all right, you don't want to do justice, I will do it. No, this wasn't justice. This was murder. This is revenge. Praise the Lord. The word of God said that he told his servant, I said, listen, wait, be patient. Strike him when he's happy and merry. Strike him when he's under the liquor or the drink. Praise the Lord. Strike him and make sure you smite him. Make sure he die. Don't make him live. No, this was after two years. 
So for two years, Absalom is waiting for a moment to kill Amnon. This is why sometimes we believe that when time has passed, people's heart has healed. Not all the time. Because if we're honest with ourselves, there are some things that we're suffering that happened to us five years ago and we're still suffering today. And because we never got justice feed. Praise the Lord. It was after two years, the young man said, all right, this is the time. The sheep is going to be sheer. Let me go ask my father, please, let Amnon come with me, man. Let him come, daddy. I, I want to share this moment with the brother that I love. But in Absalom's mind, he was ready to kill him. The word of God said he was, it's like their tongue and their lips is smooth as honey, but there's war in their heart. This is the heart of Absalom towards his brother because justice was not served. And the word of God said he smote his brother, killed his brother. And then the servants are going back and they saw David. And said, David, Absalom has killed all of your sons. No, the one that gave Amnon the counsel, he said to David, don't worry yourself. It is not all of them that have passed away, but it's only Amnon only. Notice why in verse 22. For Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, he has been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. So this man didn't have to be in the crime scene to know what happened. Because he knows the heart of Absalom. And because he knows how Absalom stay. He said, listen, tell him, David, I want son dead. And that is Amnon. And this was done. This was appointed. From the day he forced himself upon his sister. Absalom planned for this. Praise the Lord. So we have to understand as church brethren. We must allow justice to happen in the house. Or else somebody will die. Am I, we're reading from the same Bible this morning. Praise the Lord. We have to let it know. Praise the Lord. We can't hide I cover these things. This is not something that the church cover. And people will use scriptures to tell you to cover it. And they will say, you know, love covers the multitude of sin. Because I know that we are very subtle people, although we don't say. We know how to hide our sin very good. Praise the Lord. All right, I know how to hide my sin very good. Praise the Lord. I know when I was younger in ministry and, and younger in, in my Christian life, if I did sin, master, you're not going to find out unless God tell you. Because when I come to church and I start clap these hands, I start run these hands, I start speaking tongues, he said, what a brother zealous for the Lord, you know. Okay. Praise the Lord. Somebody's real at the back with me. Praise the Lord. We've all been there where we know how to hide it good and we hide it with a skip. But all of us know when a man gets up on the day and night and they start come close to you, you have to beat. <laughs> Please God, forgive me, Lord. We know. Let us be real today. We know that when sin is in our life and you, you see a mother move in the spirit, your heart will take you. You say, God, I am so sorry. Huh? But we don't want to be a people that cover our sin. The word of God said in Proverbs, anyone that cover their sins will actually destroy their own soul. But the one that confess it, will, it will live. Praise the Lord. So if we, if we cover up our sin, we're actually destroying ourselves. The word of God said that we must confess our sins, confess our faults, one to another, that we may be healed. That's, right. That's what the word of God says. So we can't do something else and expect God to do it a certain way. God has left the word of God for us to follow it to the very letter. Praise the Lord. The healing comes through our confessing. When I'm telling you, I am struggling with this. And you listen to what I'm saying. And you said, brother, let us pray. Let us go to the altar and pray. The word of God said, God will heal me. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. What should the church do? I want us to go to Judges. I got 10 minutes. Judges chapter 19. And I'll tell you the story. This is the story about when the Levite was going back home. And he didn't want to stop in the house of strangers. He wanted to stop in his bridging house. And him and his concubine, it, they were seeking out what house they could go on. An old man said to them, come into my house. And 
they, they would dine there for the night. And while they were dining there, the men of Benjamin, which were homosexuals, came to knock on the house and said, listen, bring out that man. We want our way with him. And the old man said, no, don't do this. Don't do this falling all of Israel. I have a virgin daughter. I will give you to her. And you can have, and they said, no, we don't want him. So what they did was take the man's concubine and drag her out the house, rape her violently. The word of God said from night until early morning. And when early morning come, they let her go. And the Bible said while she was going to the door, she fell at the doorway and she died. Praise the Lord. She died there. Now we're going to look at the crime in verse 29 of chapter 19 of Judges. Verse 25. Is that on the screen? Oh. But the men would not hearken to him, so the man took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. Praise the Lord. So the word of God say, they knew her when she sleep with her. And they abused her. No. We are not strangers to the practice of homosexuality, not true. We know how they behave when they're engaging in, in these things and what they do to and where they place, where they place. So when the word of God says they abuse her, you have to open your mind to that and understand what they did. Praise the Lord. They abused her. Abused her. No, this woman wasn't being happy. She was crying, bawling, begging to stop. And it was not just one, it was a whole lot of man. Just having her way with her, using her as a rock doll, abusing her from, the, from night until morning. And the word of God said, when the day began to spring, they just let her go. Praise the Lord. And she eventually died. No, that is horrible. This is wickedness, this is evil. No, when she died, her husband picks her up brings her back home and he had to spread it because this happened in Israel. Now Israel was made up of 12 tribes, we all know that. And he had to spread the news immediately because this was great lewdness and folly in Israel. And what I love about this man is that he knew that this can't stay in Israel. Now we are one church. I'll say it again. We are one church. We may have different organization, but it doesn't separate us because we're all one. No, the problem is that over time, organization has become more powerful than church. When Jesus birthed the church, he birthed one church. He didn't birth organization, he birthed the church. And he said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. But through time and through a lot of injustice, men have started their own organization. Because most organizations started because there was a lack of justice. That's true. That's right. Talk the truth. Yeah. Talk the truth. When I listen to my forefathers and hear how they start their church, I said, wow, you suffer injustice. It was actually unjust to make you step out and say, I don't want to be a part of this church no more. And they start and call the, the, the church a different name and carry on. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't matter how much time you split yourself, you're still a part of the church of God. And we can't allow the organization to make us feel like we're not one body. Praise the Lord. We must all realize, just because I'm from Calvary and you're from the ark, we're actually the one church. Because when we go to heaven, uh, there's not going to be a corner for the ark. And there's not going to be a corner for the lighthouse. And there's not going to be a corner for the bridge at Calvary. There's no corner in heaven. But the word of God says we shall be all one worshiping the Lamb day and night. So we have to get these things out of our mind that our organization is not more than the church. The organization is there to organize how we may um, work church. But it's not above the church. So when something happens in our organization, we should keep it quiet. 
Because when we keep it quiet, here's our thoughts. We don't want to shame the organization, you know. So, let's keep it here. Tell a few people and don't tell nobody. Now, what the person did, what done the crime, what they normally do is leave that organization. Go to a next organization and do the same crime. And then that organization does the same thing. Shh, keep it quiet. And that person that's going around killing and hurting brothers and sisters has never been put to the line and said, what, is, what have you done? Praise the Lord. Right. These are the things that we must get over church. Now, what this man did, it, it's going to sound gruesome, beloved. But hear the wisdom of it. In verse 29. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife and laid hold upon his concubine and divided her together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, there was no such deed done nor seen from that day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day Consider of it and take advice and speak your minds. Praise the Lord. No, he got home. He took a knife and divided her dead body into 12 pieces and sent it throughout all of Israel. Shocking. We will call this today breaking news. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. All this was was breaking news. It was to shock Israel. And the word of God said, when the people received a part of the body, they said, well, what is this? This has never been done since we have left Egypt. And all the people run to see this man and said, man, what kind of wickedness you have done? Because they don't know why they receive a piece of body. Yes. Praise the Lord. But because of how shocking it was, they came together to investigate what is going on. No, we send a lot of letters for our convention and conferences. But have we ever sent a letter and said, listen, this brother, this sister has done this. We must put a stop to them. <sighs> Paul says that there are some that are teaching heretic and they must be stopped. Mm -hmm. Speak, your mind. Mm -hmm. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. Speak your mind. You see, we're very different, you know. We, the world has made us so sensitive now that when offense and injustice are, comes up with us, we get so shy and don't want to exercise it, but we have to. We have to. They came to him and said, man, speak your mind. Why did you do this? Breaking news. No, we're not sending the letter or sending these things to shame, but we're sent to make sure holiness remains in the church i am telling you i have watched people come in church and see certain people preaching and walk out it's not that they don't love god but when they know that this person does the thing that he does and we see them up there preaching all right let me use myself if you hear that i raped our sister violently like this man would you come to preach at your church yeah the truth of it some will Some will. Some will. Some will say, because he's so gifted. Because he's so anointed. Mm. God is a forgiving God. We'll do it. And we'll use them. The word of God says, some have crept in unaware. They have crept in unaware. No, I believe they don't need to creep in no more. We have become so simple as a church. And I say, man, there are people here. They don't know what go on. Give me mine. Let me do it. I would say, here, it shouldn't be, beloved. It shouldn't be. Jesus says we're meant to be a holy church. No, if, no, the world, the world believes if a man does a crime, a man does the time. Praise the Lord. The world believes a man does the crime. It is the time. Our workplace believes in if somebody does something in the workplace, there must be a consequence towards what they've done. Amen. Now, in the church, 
Where is our rules? Where is the justice? Because when these people are, that have been unfairly treated, unfairly treated, when they're home crying and asking God to help them, where are we? Singing. We are we're singing. Thank you, Bishop. We are at church clapping our hands, speaking in tongues, singing. And there's one of our brother at home dying. No, we say we have love. But let's exercise it. Praise the Lord. Um, chapter 20, and I'm coming down. Chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. So all of the people have come to this man, and he's about to explain what he did. And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel, for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Give here your advice and counsel. We are all children of Christ. Yeah. Doesn't matter what organization, doesn't matter what tribe, we're all children of God. We all have a part to play. No, it wasn't just common folks that went to this man, you know, but it was chief of every tribe. Bishops, pastors of every, of every tribe. So when something like this is arising or getting up in the church, all the bishops will come together, man. I say, all right, we have heard this. What is going on? If we are a church, if we are one, if something happened in my church, and I hear that the brothers at your church, I should pick up the phone and say, Bishop, Bailey, let us meet and have a coffee. We need to talk. We're not trying to destroy the soul, you know, but we're trying to help the person. Praise the Lord. And we're trying to definitely help the victim. Because if I took up my church and said, let's go down to Lighthouse, and the guest speaker is Bishop Brown, after Bishop Brown just rip off the sister, and it's just sit down under that, and Bishop Brown start talking about spirit of Jezebel. She dead and everybody, hallelujah. These practices must stop in the house of God. Yes, sir. We must eradicate them. The Bible says it's lewdness and folly in Israel. We are meant to be children of wisdom. Lewdness and folly shouldn't be around us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now time is fast spent and I want, I want to get down. In verse 35, God helps. So what they actually did, when they came to the man, the man explained himself. He asked for counsel and advice. The children of Israel, when they heard the news, they said, no, none of us are going back to our tent until justice is served. The word of God said they came as one man. Praise the Lord. This must be our stance as a church. If Lighthouse decide that they're going to be, they're going to have justice, the ark needs to stand and say, we have justice too. Calvary needs to stand and say, justice too. Right. One of the problems is that when we're carrying out justice, we have some people that are under other side because when they went up to get these men the tribe of Benjamin said man I feel we, I feel we brother that you know yes. we're not making take him like that you know we are going to war for him but God gave them the power to overcome the matter praise the Lord praise the Lord Jesus yes. now all of this although I've been in the scriptures for most of the, 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 the time that I have all of these things happened in my life this is not just a thing that i'm teaching you about it's something that i've ex ex experienced and handled praise the lord this is something that i have to counsel sisters and beg them some of them i'll be honest i have lost them because no justice was served for them praise the lord we as a church must stand up to justice no, the thing is, it happened to them, but guess what? It affected me also. Because I felt helpless. And even when I spoke up loud, like the man here, no one listened. No one listened. They carried on. They still have in church. No. Praise the Lord. No. We as a church, we have to stop these things. This is not a hate message. This is an understanding message. 
that if we don't stand for justice, we will lose more souls. There will be no overcomer. There will be no overcomer. Because the word of God says, if you join with a harlot, you make yourself a harlot. You know that? So if these men are coming and we're giving their mics, the pulpit yeah, no way back. all right to the pulpit to preach again yes. the word of god said in in ecclesiastics it says as dead fly that are in the ointment so is a man let's can i find it sorry give me one second i want us to just read it dead flies Ecclesiastes 10, yes. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 1. If you could put it on the monitor. Dead flies cause the ointment of the apothecary mm -hmm. correct, to send forth a stinking savior. So doth a little folly him that is in reputation of reputation of for wisdom and honor. Right. So the scripture says that as, as dead flies is in the, the word there, with a good, it's ointment, perfume. If you put dead fly in perfume, it changes the scent and perfume. It will stink. Praise the Lord. So it says, so is a man that is in reputation and honor and wisdom. Now, if we are in a place of honor and wisdom and we do something like this, it will cause us to stink. It doesn't matter how much truth we are preaching. People will always, this is how our minds are programmed. They'll say, but, oh, you can't teach about love and you do that. It doesn't matter how long it goes. No, can they be back in the pulpit? You judge. You judge. I remember when Joseph, Joseph was betrayed by his brothers and cast into the pit and sold into Egypt. Years went by that Eden, when his Years went by, famine came, and his brother went to Egypt to see corn. He didn't just come and see him, brother, and say, Oh my God. He didn't just hug them up like that. What he did, he tried their spirit to see if they have repented. We have to, we have to forgive, yes, but restore, we have to try the spirit first. Amen. You have to know the spirit first. The word of God said, Try every spirit to see whether they have God or not. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So Joseph tried his brother's spirit, put the silver cup in their corn and sent it and then bring him back and said, all right, whoever, cup, whoever sack this is in, he's going to die. And he said, yeah, man, we believe that, man. And when they find out, they realize that he was in Benjamin, which was their youngest brother. No, what got to Joseph was when Judah rent his clothes and Christ said no please take my life that's when Joseph says you know what he has truly repented no it's easy to test these men and women spirit you know ask them to come down and don't serve up there and watch how they behave <laughs> Bishop I can close with that one Open, yes. Openly repent. Mm -hmm. Openly said, yes, I've done something wrong. Mm -hmm. To the congregation. Mm -hmm. No way back? The, the, I think the, the issue is not about, you see, we are, we are good. You heard the, the teacher. Mm -hmm. We are good at performing. Oh, okay. Yeah. We are good in knowing how to tick boxes. Mm -hmm. All right? The issue isn't, uh, brethren, I'm sorry I have just done this. If you're sorry, then there must be movement. Yes. Yes. So, so, but the, the thing, remember last night, the thing about the blood of Jesus, oh, you don't hear me. The thing about the blood of Jesus, he can make the vilest sinner clean. So the answer isn't just about 
Brethren, I've done something wrong. I'm sorry. Let's move on. What about the victim? What about those that are suffering? And so, therefore, it is important. Does that make sense, Ella? So, therefore, it is important for us that we put things in place. You know what? I, I, I noticed. Uh, put up your hand if you're a social worker or you work in education or something like that. Anyone? Okay. What we don't do, we do not apply the same principles and practices that we apply in work in the church. You're, you're, you're Monday to Friday, you're professional. And a little bit on a Saturday. But when it come round to Sunday, we are very forgiving. No, put things in place. Amen. Put child protection in place. Yes. Let's have certain things in place so that if somebody needs to report something, including the, <laughs> including the bishop, because sometimes the same problem comes from, the, uh, okay, there is a certain organization that moves people around after they have abused certain people in a certain uh, church. And instead of dealing with the situation, they move the person around. All right, we're going to move on because time is going. But, you know, one of the things that I noticed, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this and leave it. Some years ago, I went to a particular church and the speaker for the night, listen to this elder, the speaker for the night, uh, I'm going to say it, I had the privilege to sit near to him. And, and back in the day, um, we, we used to, as style, used to wear those, you know, those... Um, Socks that it look like tights, you know, you know those silk, silk socks. You know what I'm talking, the silk socks. And so, back in the day, so you know what year era we're dealing with. And I sat next to this preacher, and he had a Playboy bunny on the side of his socks. Playboy. Now, he went up and preached a message, Ella. The message is good, you know. <laughs> but that person needs to go to Calvary. <laughs> Not your church. No, no, no. <laughs> you don't want to. He need, that person needs to go back to the altar. Because if you are advertising that, you are still... Uh, uh, if you don't know what Playboy Bunny... That's pornographic stuff. And so that shows the kind of mentality of it. So forgiveness is in, important, but we have to put certain things in place. Sister Michelle, did you? I was just going to say, I was in the back, and I heard the presentation. I was in the back, I heard the presentation. Fantastic. Thank you very much for your honesty. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, you, you want to say something? I just wanted... I just wanted to add, based on what Em was asked as well, the scripture talks about bringing fruit of repentance. And again, it's not an outward show. A lot of the time we can come to church, we go to the altar, we cry, we scream, and we say that we've, at, we've, we've repented and changed. But the actual fruit of it, the actual turning away from the sin is not there. So you have a lot of people that will come to the altar, will cry, not even just the bishop, but even a sister, will cry and beg and say that they've changed, but they actually haven't done the turning away from the sin and continuing it. So we have to be discerning people that are discerning the hearts of people to know if they actually have turned or not. Do, 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 you, know, do you know that there are some individuals that they would preach a preach? <laughs> right. the, sorry? You don't need to preach to make it to heaven. No. You need to live. Yeah, right. Go, go ahead. Is there a mic? Where's the? Go ahead. Just one, one second. One second. 
sorry, just on the back of what the sister just said, it's also that thing of the church also being open because you could be in a sin and it's going to take you time to get there. So even though you've gone to the altar, you've prayed and you're repenting to the Lord, is there anybody, you know, it's having people in place where you can go to them and open up that sin to them without them judging you and taking it out on the street so are they gonna then sit with you and counsel you in that way and not judge you but help you to overcome and put strategies in place when you are thinking these thoughts because it's not just an outward thing it's a spiritual thing and thoughts Everybody sins in their thoughts every single day. Mm -hmm. Because you see something and you think, oh, that's not right. That's still, you're sinning because you're judging. Yeah? So just wanted to say that on the back of it. Good morning, everyone. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Max. Thank you. On the back of what the sister just said, um, earlier you talked about uh, forgiving our sins and mm -hmm. talked about, you know... Um, confessing our sins one to another. Right. And I'm just wondering how prevalent is that in the church nowadays? So it's telling me that not only is there a, a, a thing about injustice, there's something about trust. There's yeah. no trust in the church. Mm -hmm. Because where would you go? Who would you speak to mm -hmm. if you've got a thought like pornography? Yeah. Who would you go to? Who would you the talk to? Thank you. There are some real issues and challenges. Let's say challenges. Every one of us have challenges and feelings. Can I say feelings? All right. I have got to be very careful because this is um, taking up the preacher time, the next teacher's time. But it's an issue that we really need to, to task, tackle even in your church. But let us not brush it under the carpet, but let us put things in place so that if there are victims, sometimes people don't think of victims, okay? And as the, the, the teacher says, sometimes because the person who is the perpetrator is so eloquent and is so nice and is so loved, we prefer the one that we love rather than dealing with the victim. And if I am a victim, I want to see justice. Amen? Amen? I want to see justice. I, I, and also, it also shows that each and every one of us have messed up at some stage. But also, it, we need to show that there must be a way back. Amen. And uh, you see, I, I'm very old school because these days, do you remember? We used to go to go to the altar and ball. We, I mean, not talking tears, you know. We're talking about sorry, but along with the the, the, the crying, the, there was a turn around life. Amen. Uh, amen? amen. But if there is no turn around life, these these days, some folks, bishop, they come to the house of God and they come to the altar. The hands is in their pockets. They stand up like them bigger than God. And even preachers too. All right, leave that. But there is something called grace. God's grace.